So, inspired by the recent Fighting on Film uh, podcast about Great War Cinema, I thought I'd take a closer look at the Vickers machine gun during the, uh, the that features in the Battle of the Somme film that was a documentary film filmed in June to July 1916 and at the time was the most watched movie or cinema um, film ever. So, uh, you know, absolutely amazing uh, footage uh, to look at and I've just picked out a couple of the clips uh, and used the Ghosts on the Somme book to analyse those in a little bit more detail and obviously talk about the kit and equipment that we see. The first clip is from part two of the film. Using the information from Ghosts from the Somme, it's supposedly 30th of June 1916 possibly and uh, across the Anka Valley and Malins took this himself. What we've got is um, initially we have a forward observation officer in the front trenches which is quite you know, something actually because how far forward I'm not really sure but you know the um, the sandbag there would give away his position quite clearly uh, or the, certainly the position of the parapet and he's not very you know low so um, I assume sort of second line third line whatever and you can just see the shoulder title RGA there for Royal Garrison Artillery and um, it seems to be on a field telephone um, yeah here which you can you can see if we just play that forward a little bit but what we're interested in is the Vickers machine guns of course um, and what we have is uh, they're taking it off the tripod here uh, to put it up here onto the parapet now it looks like that's their dugout behind and uh, in Ghost of the Somme they say about they're taking the machine gun from the dugout but it doesn't look they're taking it from the tripod rather than that um, you can just see uh, if we slow this down a little bit let's just slow that down to, to half speed um, and just scroll back so let's go to, to half speed. It gives us a little bit more of an opportunity to look at the gun. You could just see there, it's a bit pixelated, a bit blurred there now, but the five arch top cover indicating it's an early L series gun uh, from Erith in Kent rather than Crayford. And actually that makes sense. Crayford wasn't really in full production by the time of the Somme. So these are Erith guns and that's an early L series gun. Um, there looks to be something wrapped around the barrel casing uh, there. And as they put it up on the top, we get a good look at their equipment. And they're wearing 08 pattern web equipment. Looks to be like ground sheets or something that are tied to the back as well, above their entrenching tool halves, which is quite interesting. They're wearing uh, shorts, uh, or this individual is. I can't really see what the others are wearing, but they're wearing. Uh, he's wearing shorts. And this looks to be like an officer with Sam Brown equipment, uh, and um, a uh, water bottle or other bit of equipment or maybe binocular pouch because his binoculars are there um, being used as well so uh, they're wearing helmet covers uh, let's let's clear that and let's carry on and have a look uh, they're having to get if you look this this wire across here uh, field telephone wire they're having to get that out of the way um, as well to be able to get the gun up they folded the tripod uh, to be able to lift it much easier uh, which is a very sensible thing to do and you can just see that ground sheet tied above the entrenching tool head again there um, and they're wearing their gas hoods over their shoulders uh, you can just see the bags hanging down here um, what can we tell you let's as that moves forward we get a good look at the tripod there and you can see that first pattern that uh, elevating wheel cover there that fits over the normal elevating wheel so those that have tripods uh, in the collections will know that the elevating wheel sits on the back it's a really rubbish circle isn't it um, and they're graduated they have these little lines that I think are 15 degrees um, around the edge maybe the, and there's different sizes as well there's some that go all the way and then some that just go half so I think there's 15s and fives um, but they allow you to change the elevation quite easily without having to use a clinometer so up or down five degrees you just change it you know on the uh, by spinning the wheel they don't have that on the early tripods they're smooth wheels so what they did was introduce this cover that has a graduated plate on it has all of the um, indentations uh, you know, engraved in so that you can fit that over a blank wheel and use it accordingly 
uh, so what else can we tell you? And it looks like, um, as they get all that out of the way, uh, it looks like that it's got the um, first pattern direction dial as well. So that slips over the top of the tripod. It doesn't spin like the Mark II, uh, but it does give you uh, 360 degrees marked on that. So yeah, and you can see actually one of the other um, members of the uh, of the detachment there is wearing shorts too. So he's setting up the tripod, uh, gets it all in place, and then we have this gun. And it's possible that this is um, now looking side on from that position. So you're looking in this way rather than that setting up of the gun um, looking that way. But this is clearly in a dug in emplacement, so it doesn't match uh, you know, entirely, but it's possible, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it's from this area here. Uh, you've got somebody with binoculars in there. Maybe, it, I'm sort of partly wondering that the, the first gun that we saw is uh, in this direction, so the camera's been looking left, and then they turn quickly and they look right into this direction. And we can see there that the five arch top cover just, you can see that bit of light coming through there uh, with the early, uh, early equipment on it. There's the direction dial a little bit clearer, and you can see that there is um, the steam tube coming out. Now, uh, Roberts, um, Roberts, uh, it goes on the Somme, talks about uh, possibly this only just started firing, but it is steaming quite well. So, you know, it boils up after 600 rounds, so it's implied that it's fired some rounds, and there's some length of belt that's already uh, you know, been fired through. But I would say possibly that it, you know, it is, it seems to be experiencing a stoppage, number three stoppage or something like that, as he's trying to straighten out the ammunition belt. And um, what you can see here, that, let me just go back a little bit, can you see this, these triangular shapes here? That is a very short-lived piece of equipment um, that is a rain cover or gas cover fits over the top of the ammunition box. So what you've got is this belt box like this, and then it's got this cover that comes and fits like that. Now, and is hinged here, so that when the ammunition belt comes out and up into the feed block, which would sit up it here, it's not being exposed to rain and it's not being exposed to gas. Now that's excellent. Yeah, that, that, that works really well. Um, because ammunition belts, you know, they swell up in the rain and everything like that, so it's a problem. What they do on the later boxes is hinge the lid here, so you give a half lid, or you know, it might be issued with this one as well, but it, and then you get this half lid that does a similar job. You can rest it on top of the belt, but it will cause stoppages if it gets caught. So uh, you generally flip that back over and um, it keeps it there. But you can just see that. So I think this is the only time I've seen it uh, in, in use. So it's quite a scarce piece of equipment to uh, to use. Uh, what else can we tell you? So helmet covers, um, not much more. And then we've got this, uh, you know, maybe this gun from a different position again. So maybe we're further down the line. Uh, but what can we tell you? Uh, you know, helmet covers, could be that same gun, don't know, yeah, let's say from that different angle, so maybe they've got it firing. But this panorama shot goes out and looks across the battlefield and you know, effectively ends quite sort of somberly just looking at uh, the explosions of, uh, of shells in the background. Uh, you can see as they appear over the panorama there. And then the second machine gun clip comes from part five of the film. So here we go. Here's a group of machine guns being cleaned. Uh, and it goes into quite a lot of detail of that cleaning process. It's supposedly uh, 10th Brigade Machine Gun Company or Machine Gun Corps. And it's at White City. So, you know, Malins was the cameraman again. And it's believed to be 1st of July 1916. And this is the end of the day where they were uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning the guns. And uh, Ghost of the Somme tells us that by the end of the day, the survivors were back in the British front line where seven guns were deployed. The remaining five guns were sent back to Tenderloin, allowing for 16 guns in the company and four of those being lost. There should have been five guns 
at Tenderloin, which is exactly the number seen in these shots, shots 59.1 to 2. So, uh, 10 Brigade Machine Gun Company, what can we tell you about uh, in the image? Obviously, they you know, they are cleaning their guns. Uh, they you know, are brushing down these ammunition belts, uh, getting all of the mud off them. What we can say about these ammunition belts is I have perfectly loaded. You can see that the the, um, the length of the rounds out the back of the the belt is even and regular. You know, we saw in the previous clip that the, the stoppage caused possibly by the ammunition belt, um, which if these become irregular, then that is what will cause it. Uh, this chap's doing the same. This chap here is emptying a belt box. Uh, which is uh, quite uh, of mud and we've had this experience ourselves you yeah, know they do get full uh, so he's having to knock that um, empty now this seems to be a number six belt box uh, as does this one and possibly this at the back they were the first type of metal belt box and they are you know the normal rectangular shape and they have a two-part lid uh, which we talked about and they are rather than being hinged at the back here they're hinged at the side so the the lid lifts up like that and then we have a hinge down the middle that the front one you know comes off of so it can be opened up completely but the the, the front hinge uh the, the front half can be lifted up and the back half stay in place uh, which solves the problem of water or gas ingress again and you can just see this front half flapping about it's obviously a a, a, a more difficult production because it has two hinges in place uh you know in different angles um whereas the late and number seven number eight and number nine belt boxes they just have their uh hinge in the middle and then one at the back here they don't have it at the side a side belt box hinge also allows you to open it uh, without using as much headroom uh in a in a dugout or emplacement or pillbox so it does have some benefits and advantages which is why it does stay in service uh the gun being cleaned at the back there has its auxiliary tripod here which we've shown you the video of in the past being fired and it's got that front band to support the legs as well um that uh, chap is clearly you know, that this person here you can see that arm moving they are using the clearing rod uh, to clean that top cover open so that's being cleaned down as well um, you can see they all have their gas hoods uh, over their shoulders even when they're not wearing their equipment so that principle still exists uh, and you, know, you can you can see that there's absolutely vital part of equipment um, they've got the helmet covers on as well what else so they're obviously working through you can just see this chap here you can see this leg moving a little bit uh, as he's probably trying to clean it quite um, you know I wonder if they've got a bit of a problem there because that gun is rocking backwards and forwards as they're cleaning it and then we've got somebody walking across the front of the camera but you can see their kit and you can see a little bit more clearly this roll here so possibly his ground sheet tied up tight on the back of his belt um, and what we noticed they're not wearing that person wasn't wearing was an entrenching tool head um, which unless he's got it on the side quite possibly and then we've got a different shot and we can see you know, different guns so i think that's probably the end of the gun we were just looking at in the last shot we've then got another one up here on its auxiliary mount we've got one here on its auxiliary mount um, and i think they've got one up here on its auxiliary mount as well so uh, we've got the, the, those guns all in all in place um, what's really nice about this gun is the auxiliary mount as you can see when it's rested just sits on its back which is actually quite difficult to clean because it sits on the cross piece and is difficult to clean from there so what this person has done is put an ammunition box underneath the cross piece so that, that gun's nice and level when you want to take it apart this person has the barrel uh, so it's about to be reassembled by the looks of it there's no feed block in there and um, this person looks like they've got a cleaning rod uh, possibly for, with this gun here we've got this person out here staying out of the way with his mess tin having something to eat um, this looks to be an officer of some sort it's got an armband or a wristband there um, and a stick so perhaps they have a brigade roll or something like that um, that person in the middle there is really giving it a good clean down so yeah handing back the barrel up uh, ready to put it back into place but we're going to move over to this gun here now um, and uh, it probably is a different gun actually so maybe that is the five guns that were mentioned and yeah, the, the, this gun is set up on its tripod. Uh, it's not rocking about. So yeah, it's it's a fifth gun. It's different, but it also has a, a bit of material around the barrel. Now that could be a barrel casing repair uh, from like flannelette and looting plasticine, or it could be a piece of um, woolen fabric to stop it getting so hot that when you have to pick it up, because if you look at it, it's not fitted with an auxiliary mount. Um, 
So, but it is fitted with a strap around the cross piece to help uh, pick it up from the rear. Uh, up in here, we have another tripod there as well, which is probably for this gun. Yeah, they're all sat on top of Wrigley Tin um, you know, as part of the shelters. So it's it's quite interesting to see that. Yeah, and we're having something to eat as well. So they're replenishing the men as well as the guns. Um, so yeah, and so taking that barrel there uh, to put it back into the gun probably all we can tell you at the moment but it's certainly fascinating to see them you know putting that together and then that clip ends with a look at the gunners and some infantry that were obviously accompanying them as part of the attack so there we go that's a look at the vickers machine gun element of uh the battle of the somme hopefully you found that interesting please do like share subscribe all that good stuff and please do support us on patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash vickers mg thank you for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you